and welcome to another Tech Campus Coffee Live webinar. This is an opportunity for you to learn about career paths at tech directly from professionals in your field. We'll be speaking to technical representatives from a variety of fields at tech, and they'll share why they enjoy what they do. Participants also have a chance to directly ask speakers and recruiters questions and get a good understanding of why tech is a great place to work, as well as where your strengths, talents, and learning opportunities lie. So, yeah, let's introduce our, our two guest speakers. So the first is uh, Abra Garnett. She's a lead uh, data engineering services. Uh, and our other guest is Karul uh, Karub, and she's a senior security advisor. Uh, and so, you know, these are two different career paths um, that uh, potentially you might be interested in. Uh, and so just going back to, for those who jumped on a little bit late, what we want to do is uh, we encourage you to ask questions. Uh, so they're gonna talk, you know, we've got some questions for them. They're gonna talk a little bit about their careers and what they do, um, but we definitely encourage you to use the chat feature uh, to, to type in your questions there and we'll, we'll answer all, uh, we'll, we'll do our best to answer every single question. Uh, and for those who don't have access to that uh, or just want to, uh, to yeah, rather, you know, rather than type and ask their question, that's fine. Uh, we can use the raise the hand feature um, in Teams uh, and the top. Uh, so depending on what browser you're using, I guess sometimes at the top, sometimes at the middle, um, and then once you've got your hand up, we will call on you and you can unmute your mic and ask your question. All right, uh, but maybe we'll just to kick us off. Um, Abra, maybe do you want to uh, introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you do at Tech. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Abra Garnett, I lead the data engineering services team. And what we're currently doing as a foundation for that Race 21 work that you guys so well described earlier. We are bringing the data from all of the desperate uh, on-prem systems from all of those different sites that were described and we're bringing it into the cloud. And right now we are in the middle of a cloud transition. So that actually means we're bringing it into GCP and Azure. So it's a lot of work uh, and it's a really neat job to see all of the data being accessible in a way that it never has been in the past. You can do a lot of cool things with the big data in the cloud that you just never had the compute power on-prem to do. Awesome. Great, thanks, Sabra. Uh, and Perul, same question for you. Thank you, Masiki, and thank you, Abra. So uh, can I just get a little bit out of what Abra just introduced for herself, saying I'm securing all of what Abra is doing? <laughs> no, but I'm going to extend that to a little bit further. So by qualification, I'm a Bachelor of Computer Science and Master's in Information Systems Management. I also have Certified Information System Security uh, Professional Certificate uh, to be you know, uh, leading this field. Uh, last but not least, I'm also a Harvard, Harvard cert uh, certified mentor uh, professional. Uh, in regards with what we are doing in Race 21, I lead their cybersecurity program, and the tagline that we use is making sure, uh, making Race 21 a safe and secure program. Um, what we are doing in that space is, so we have uh, various product teams who who have been developing and creating these fantastic products in transforming and you know creating digital transformations on the mining sites and uh, doing all sort of innovate, innovative um, activities. What my team does is making sure that uh, all those products are kept secure. If Abra's team is doing uh, something around data, then we have to make sure that the data is kept secure and private as much as possible. So that's the gist of my profession here at uh, Tech, but I'm happy to answer any other questions that anyone might have. Awesome. That's great. Um, perfect. Well, I think a good place for us to start is um, maybe just to, to learn a little bit more about your day to day and learn a little bit more about your your career path so far. What what gets you excited about tech? Like, you know, you've both been here. I think I know for Abra, she's been here for a few years. I'm Perul. I know I'm just learning about your your opportunity and where you've been. But um, what what gets you excited about the next couple of years at tech? What's happening right now with this transition that we're going through? And we, we alluded to a little bit about like race 21 is sort of transitioning to race X. What does the future hold and, and what's, what gets you excited about it? Well, I can take that first. Uh, okay. So for me, it's, uh, I would, I see race 21 as an, an never ending journey for tech because what they're doing is not only exceptional in the mining industry, but also, uh, trying to set an example for the for the other industries uh, out there, and what my team is actually doing 
um, is even beyond in terms of, you know, we are also making sure that we also become innovative in with our cybersecurity solutions. And what I'm most excited about whenever I come to work every day in the morning is I know that my team is going to give me new challenges as they are they have been working on these amazing products and I need to solve their cybersecurity. You know, I have to provide them with even uh, innovative or interesting solutions to ensure that their amazing work is kept secure and um, uh, also, you know, kind of set another example from a cybersecurity standpoint. So it's it's a learning opportunity for me uh, as, you know, as much as I'm giving it back to the product teams or uh, to the entire Ace 21 teams and securing the products. That's for me. Abra? Yeah, I can give my side for sure. Um... Like Stacey said, I've actually been a tech for nine years now, which is kind of crazy to think about. I did start as co-op student <laughs> and nine years ago, it was a totally different landscape. We were very constrained by the resources we had. We had a whole lot of data, but we can actually do much with it. So in a really cool initiative, I was part of that original five for race 21 and I got to see what we could do with this. And now every day I get to see doors open that we can actually utilize this data we've been collecting for years in ways that we would have never dreamed possible five years ago. And that's what gets me excited that I get to be on the team that's opening these doors for people and for ideas that are coming from everywhere around the company to actually be executed when before they were just dreams. That's awesome. See how I baited you to, to mention that you were a former co-op? <laughs> awesome. No, I appreciate that. Great. Okay. And then I guess in, in terms of like for the for the people on the call, obviously a lot of them are going to be co-op students or students looking for new graduate positions. Are there any skill sets that you'd like to see a student or a new grad coming to tech with in your particular disciplines? Oh, and then also there's a question in the chat that maybe I'll I'll highlight um, after this, but um, I, this sort of relates to that question. That is there any skill sets or certificates or, or training that they should have coming on board prior to, to joining your teams as a co-op, say, we'll start with? And Perul, maybe I'll, I'll throw it to you first. Uh, yeah, sure. So I would say not necessarily. Uh, so I come from a consulting background where we have had, you know, uh, many co-ops working for us and people from so many different work, you know, um, like educational focuses, like mechanical engineering or uh, electronics or, you um, what else should I name uh, just for the sake of it? Let's say uh, communications. Yes, they all had have had, uh, uh, you know, found a position in our team. And all you need to know or have is enthusiasm for security. And I'm not, not going to talk about uh, data here. But uh, the reason I'm saying that is not only that's going to actually help you learn things more quickly, when you will be applying them more practically at job, uh, you know, if you um, if you're coming in and trying, you know, getting that opportunity to work for us as a co-op student, but also going to give you uh, an opportunity to actually learn the inside out of cybersecurity, right? Uh, it doesn't have to be um, a certificate to, to start with, but it depends. If you would want to be at a comfortable level of uh, knowledge and awareness. I can absolutely recommend uh, to start with some certifications, but if you'd want to go with a much lighter and comfortable route, uh, it could also be just, you know, um, reading a few articles on cybersecurity frameworks or standards like the industry leading practices, uh, just to kind of understand why security is so important and especially in a mining industry. So I will okay. stop there. Okay. Yeah, and I guess specifically in the in the chat, someone's asked. Um, they're wondering if a mechanical engineer could enter the cybersecurity field, and then if they need a like an a OSCP or EPTP uh, certificate. And so I guess Pearl, that that would be to you. Yep. Uh, no. So I and like I said, uh, it doesn't have to be any certification to just start uh, exploring the field. It it mainly has to be the interest and the enthusiasm for security. And security, like I, I see security as just one word, but it has so many other focuses and domains underneath it. 
before you actually experience those, you know, let's say identity and access management versus security and operations, right? There are two very different things. But once you are able to experience them on the job, uh, it would be difficult to actually decide on what certifications would be important to do. So I would recommend uh, again either reading articles about security or going through some standards like uh, NIST. Uh, which is uh, National Institute of Science and Technology publications that keep publishing on security uh, standards every year, or just reading uh, through the frameworks that, that are out there. And I can um, just throw a few in the chat uh, for you to start with. But um, I think interest and enthusiasm are the two most important things that would lead you to uh, a very, I think, good career, not just um, success in security. And if I can also share a, a very personal example, I was never a security professional by profession when I just started with my first job in my career. I, I was actually a software engineer. I used to write code, but very shortly enough, I went into, uh, you know, like, what do people do to actually steal some information from the code is how I uh, evolved my interest in security. And here I am, like, I'm now just... <laughs> To doing all things inside out of, of security. So I'm I'm going to take a pause here and I'm going to uh, throw something from the chat regarding certifications if people are interested and also name a few frameworks that we follow. Great. Back. Thanks, Phil. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Thank you. OK, and Abra, um, maybe I'll throw it over to you. So you've had lots of co-ops over the years. So started as a co-op and then has supervised a lot of co-ops over the years. So can you talk to us a little bit about any skill sets you'd like to see a co-op coming on board or what kind of a, um, experiences would you like them to have? Yeah, for sure. I might use this opportunity to shamelessly plug the fact that there is a job opening on my team <laughs> available on the site, data pipeline engineer. So if you guys like what you hear, definitely feel free to apply. Awesome. Um, but also, yeah, so this is something that's really on the top of my mind because I am in this process. And like Perul said, we're kind of in this ever changing environment where your past really doesn't help you as much as your enthusiasm and willingness to learn. One thing in my field that we are looking for is somebody with object-oriented coding experience, just because we do a lot of that to get at some of the more obscure data that exists around tech um, and some scripting languages for the less obscure data, the more normal stuff, um, something like Python and or C Sharp for the object-oriented. We'd be looking for some experience or just past projects showing that that's something like you're comfortable with in that. Perfect. No, that's great. And this is always an, a time that I always like to highlight with people too, when they're looking for jobs and they're putting their resume in the hat. Um, I, I guess I always try to warn people that likely it's someone like myself, a non-technical person that's looking at your resume. So just make sure you highlight things like this. I know it's hard to, to highlight the enthusiasm and all that part, but even through a cover letter, you can certainly mention, hey, I attended Campus Coffee. I listened to Abraham Pro Rule speak and I was really inspired or whatever it is. But then also in there, really clearly highlighting those skill sets that you have that these two have, have highlighted today and making it clear for someone like myself to be able to pick that out of your resume um, and, and never make assumptions. Just assume that it's someone that's non-technical looking at your resume first go. It's a, it's a really great, uh, I guess, thing to think about when you're preparing your resume to, to apply for jobs because it's not always the technical person that takes the first look at your resume. Great. Um, I know we have a couple of questions coming up here, but I think there's uh, a hand up here. Ashmit, Ash I, uh, I recognize that name. Ashmit, do you want to turn your mic on and ask a question? Uh, hey guys, Ashmith here. Uh, I used to be a co-op here before. Uh, my question here is for Parul. So it's regarding cybersecurity. Um, so my question is for large enterprises as tech resources. What measure are you taking to, you know, make your uh, like a data bulletproof? Like what tools do you use for uh, vulnerability management and uh, threat protection? Um, I heard like, you know, you will be moving towards a cloud uh, is that one of the steps that you, you know, use to mitigate kind of vulnerabilities and ransom attacks? Okay, so very loaded question, but very important one. And the reason it's loaded is because it's covering a lot of, uh, you know, areas. So I think I would start from uh, the rear end that whether or not we are using cloud to make sure that we are keeping the data secure. The answer would be no. Uh, cloud is only a platform or technology that we are uh, 
leveraging to actually run a not really literal run the business, but actually uh, creating our applications or basically transforming our application development platforms or data analysis platforms or shared services platform to actually run them in a virtual space is why we are moving towards cloud. But whether or not we are leveraging cloud as a security, uh, and the reason I said no is because cloud is just a platform, but we need to put more layer on top of cloud to make sure whatever is happening on cloud is kept secure. And for that, some of the things that we are doing is making sure that whenever we are setting up the environment on the cloud, the overall configurations are done right. Basic security, right? And I'm I'm going literally from the framework uh, stages is protecting our environment here, right? But then uh, comes. Uh, are we uh, or do we have enough uh, capabilities in place that will help us identify our gaps? For that, we have our custom built tech cybersecurity framework that actually I myself built last year for tech. Uh, we are basing our security controls off of that framework, and that framework has been built on various industry leading frameworks, naming of US NIST, CIS Top 20, uh, ISA 62443. Uh, we have Cloud Security Alliance uh, controls outlined in there and so on and so forth. So that's how we make sure that we identify the right gaps in our mechanism. Then comes detecting uh, what's going on in that environment. Like if there is some malicious actor trying to get into our space and trying to do some, you know, um, any kind of malicious activity, like, you know, even like walking around the environment trying to steal some data. Do we have the right set of capabilities uh, established around that environment so that we can help ourselves detect those activities? And yes, for uh, things like that, we do have tools in place, and I'm going to name a few in the end. But then the next step, what if something were to go wrong? Let's say we are in an intrusion or under a cyber attack. Do we have enough mechanism to actually respond to that attack? That's another capability that uh, we need to have in place. Last but not least is if we fall prey to an, uh, to an attack and we lose some data, do we have enough mechanism to actually recover from the loss, right? Those are the five important areas that we need to make sure when we are talking about protecting our environment, right? And some of the examples that we are using uh, to make sure of those things, yes, we have, uh, like I said, our custom build framework for it. We have some mechanisms with like uh, we have our security incident and event monitoring tools Splunk, where we capture all the logs data with the help of which we can actually identify the movement or any malicious activity going on uh, on our environment. Then we also have our defense mechanism by uh, provided by our security partner Mandiant uh, with the with, uh, help of which we are able to foresee some of the threats to our environment. And then last but not least, we uh, have our custom built, uh, you know, internal in tuning processes that we actually put on top of these um, like managed defense mechanism or our security incident event monitoring tools to actually tune up those uh, the outputs of these tools to make sense out of these like getting raw data is one thing, but making sure that it's giving us information that OK, who is acting from which country, let's say, let's say it, or, you know, person sitting in XYZ country, why are they trying to do that? And what is the location and all those things so that we can verify that that's an adversary who's trying to uh, attack on our environment, right? So that would be the long answer. <laughs> that's why I said it's a question, but does it help? Oh, that definitely helps. Uh, that answers a lot of things. Uh, so that's great that you already have these kind of mechanisms in place. Uh, but I guess next time we can go over, you know, more in detail, like how do you mitigate every asset? Like, you know, do you have an agent installed to track these vulnerabilities and then you go about the patching process afterwards? Oh, yeah, I can actually just speak a little bit more about on that front. So, for example, for application security, we just established a few uh, tooling and automation mechanisms in place with the help of which, you know, like you have the overall software development lifecycle. So whenever uh, an application, you know, is in the design, sorry, in the requirement gathering phase, we will have mechanism to actually identify requirements when they're in the design phase, they will have further steps uh, making sure of security. But 
when it actually comes to getting that application coded, like or actual development of the, um, you know, the skeleton and the meat into that uh, application, that's when we run our security scans and we have um, Sonar Cube as our static application uh, testing tool. And uh, we are using some technologies like Burp Suite or um, the the uh, there is one more that I'm almost losing the name of, but technologies like Burp Suite for uh, dynamic application security testing that we are actually leveraging to identify vulnerabilities around applications and similar. Uh, to application security, we also have uh, Prisma cloud capabilities to actually help us scan some of the cloud environments to give those vulnerabilities out of our cloud environments, with, you know, so that we can identify them and you know uh, pass them back to the teams so as uh, so that they can remediate them uh, based on what levels of uh, vulnerabilities uh, they they have come out from that scanning process. Got it. Perfect. Thank you so much for answering all these questions. That was very informative. No problem. My pleasure. Stay I was I was worried that we wouldn't be able to give as much detail. So hopefully that's not uh, top secret information. <laughs> I'm just teasing. It's my, not, it's my job to not do that. It's my job to not lose my job. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. No, thanks, Pru. That was a really great explanation. Um, great. Okay, so we've got a couple of questions in the chat. I know that I had missed a part of someone's question there. Um, Ishan had asked also if we hire people with mechanical degrees in our co-op program, and um, and that's for the cybersecurity piece. So I don't know, Pearl, have you ever had a mechanical engineer come through on the cybersecurity front? Like I know often it's computer engineers or software engineers potentially, yeah, but. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. In fact, this was just probably two years back when I had two co-op students working for me, and one of them uh, was from a university in Montreal, I believe. And yeah, he actually was from a mechanical engineering background, and he was super duper enthusiastic about cybersecurity. And uh, the way we had, you know, put him on an engagement was literally to help him understand the whys of the overall project that we were doing at that time. And that project was actually uh, about a lot of things for uh, one of our uh, federal clients in North America. And I'm, I am not supposed to share that information about the client. That's why I'm not going to name that client. But uh, we were basically um, establishing. Uh, so one of the one of the pillars that we were doing in the bigger program was establishing their risk assessment framework. And the reason we had tied the uh, co-op student with that particular piece of the project was simply to allow him to understand the risks of cybersecurity if it's not done right, right? Because that uh, would not only give him opportunity to understand the whys behind cybersecurity, but also what are we trying to solve? What problem are we trying to solve? So this is how we had introduced cybersecurity from the real world so that he can also help uh, starting from brainstorming on those problems and what could go wrong if we were to take step A versus step B is how we had initially uh, introduced him to cybersecurity. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, great. All right, Avra, do you wanna go next? There's a question in the chat here about what tools or processes are you most excited about and what's, uh, what are the most cutting edge tools that you've adopted? And uh, this comes from a, a current co-op of ours, actually. <laughs> For sure. Um, I think what the process I'm most excited about is as we transition to Azure, we're moving to an event-driven architecture. So all the data will be fed to these applications right as it comes in, right as that data is obtained, the applications will be able to receive it. Instead of doing a pull to see what's changed, they'll just get all of the changes. So that's what's really exciting me now is the window, like the world of opportunity that presents for us to do alarming, alerting, and just have people have a real-time vision of exactly what's going on. And as for what the most cutting edge tools that I've adopted, I have gotten some pretty cool opportunities working with both Google and Microsoft closely where we get to implement some beta tools. So I don't think it gets any more cutting edge than something that hasn't even been released to the public. Uh, we've gotten to do that with a few different of their Databricks and BigQuery technologies that they've put out. That's awesome. Yeah, I've heard of our partnership there. It seems like it's pretty, uh, pretty exciting. <laughs> 
Awesome. All right. Um, and there's a, a question that chat Misaki's just put up. So if you guys want to um, to sort of put a thumbs up on either one there, just in, so that we're make sure we're targeting our, our conversation and where you, everyone's interested in. Um, but in the meantime, I know that we have some co-op students on the line and one in particular, Andrew, who's kindly volunteered to join the meeting today. Um, and I think it's always great. We can always talk about how great it is to work for attack and how amazing the opportunities are. But I think it's really neat to, for a co-op student to be able to share a little bit about their experience and what kind of projects they get to do. Because um, we certainly take a lot of pride in the fact that we give our co-op students a lot of responsibility when they're with us. So Andrew, if you wouldn't mind just giving a quick intro of where you're working, what you're doing, and then uh, and then tell us a little bit about kind of fun stuff that you get to do at Tech. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I'm Andrew Shane. I'm currently a digital systems co-op here. Uh, so I'm kind of on the other end of the data, actually. I'm currently working on uh, upgrading the control system here at the Line Creek operations, the wash plant. Um, so yeah, we're uh, completely switching our PLC, the whole um, yeah communication system, switching from Modbus Plus to Ethernet IP. So kind of, yeah, not quite uh, cybersecurity, but they're the ones protecting the data that we're going to be we're going to be getting a ton more soon here. So yeah, I'm sort of on the other end of that. So yeah, the main project I've been working on here has been this giant uh, plant upgrade that hasn't been upgraded since the 80s. So it's a pretty big task, but yeah, definitely a lot of responsibility I've been given. And yeah, it's been a great time. Been a bit both like working from home and also hands on in the plant. So really a, a great experience to get both like um, design work and as well, like kind of actually seeing the implementation of it. So uh, it's been a great experience so far. Awesome. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, and that's something that, you know, Abra has mentioned a little bit about her role. Um, we have quite a variety in the digital system space. And then on the other side of, of race as well, um, there's quite a variety of roles. And if you look at the postings that we have up currently, um, you'll see that even in the coal division alone, which is where Andrew has been supporting and um, Abra works as well, is um, we have at least 13 different roles that we have. Uh, we're currently recruiting for September and that's every term, the digital systems, they always seem to have some unique roles that come up. So um, certainly lots of variety for no matter what you're looking for in this space, there's literally an opportunity that might be <laughs> relevant for what you're looking for. And some are offering a lot more hands-on experience and then others are are offering a little bit more on the design and, and the back end side of things. So there's lots of lots of variety uh, within. Um, great. All right. I know there's a few co-ops on the line, which is really always nice to see um, that everyone's sort of joining the call and learning about the different areas. And that's another benefit of being a co-op here, too, is that we have a, a quite a student community and they get to learn from each other and learn from different departments as well. So there's lots of opportunities to learn about different areas of the technology space, even while you're employed as a co-op or, or a new graduate here as well. Um, I think there's a couple of questions here. So Masaki, uh, lead me in the right direction to make sure I haven't missed anybody. I think someone had asked that I realized I'd missed earlier, um, if you consider tech, uh, tech skills program students in the co-op program. Um, so the biggest challenge with co-op I know in a lot of times is that it's uh, generally our terms are eight months in duration or longer. So if your program allows for a longer co-op term, then certainly we could consider. There's definitely some areas where we're doing um, like electronics technicians and different areas where we could utilize people in like a technology program that might be in shorter duration than say a, a university degree. Um, but we haven't seen a ton of the co-op just because usually we like to see students coming for a longer duration. But um, there is summer student programs that we do hire technology students through. So it's something to keep an eye out for in the summer. Um, with coal and I know the trail operations does summer as well. Hopefully that answers your question. Add, Lee. And just to add to that, like the, there's a reason for the eight months is that there's just a whole ton to learn when you're mm -hmm. sort of adjusting. I can see the heads nodding of the people at tech. <laughs> they get it. There's a, you know, there's a lot to learn at our organization and, uh, you know, it's not just technology, but just, you know, resource company mining and, and just safety, all these kind of things. So, um, and most students, who've uh, finished the exit survey are glad they did eight months rather than four months. They've got a lot more out of it and they felt like they contributed more. So um, the question next, Stacy, is from Diviani, I think. Uh, okay. Are there any co-op opportunities for students who are not really good at co in coding with regards to security opportunities? Cool, I'll, I'll throw that over to you. <laughs> so uh, we don't have any co-op opportunities right now that are like currently open. 
but I am 100% certain that uh, we will have some in the short time frame. And what I can do is probably I can connect with you, Stacy, and uh, we can develop a communication channel so that whenever they come up, we are you know able to inform the students out there. Because I know we have one, but that does need uh, some exp you know beforehand experience in the security operations domain. But I do believe uh, we will have more in the areas where there would be more opportunities for, you know, fresh set of uh, set of eyes and brains who would like to learn about security. So stay tuned for that. And one suggestion for students interest in that space is, you know, once you've worked that tech and you've proven yourself in a programming role or in another role or a TDS support role or whatnot, um, is it's going to be that much easier for you to secure work again in the future in uh, another area. We're so broad. We have so many different opportunities. Um, and I've seen it many, many times, and not just students, but with even our, our EITs and our PITs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And then the operational technology side, like Andrew, maybe you could speak to that. Um, I guess in terms of coding, is there a lot on the operational technology side of things? OT security? Um, so yeah, I'm actually like electrical engineer. So yeah, my, my coding skills aren't <laughs> the highest level. Um, so what I deal with more is like uh, PLC based coding. So more ladder logic or function block. Um, so those are quite different than yeah the object orientated stuff that's going on more in the cyber security side. But definitely like mostly what I'm doing right now is not <laughs> on the code side of things. It's more the electrical uh, wiring and like schematic stuff. So Definitely lots of opportunities on the OT side. Awesome. Thanks, Andrew. Great. All right, I'm mindful of time. I know, Masaki, we have a couple of minutes here um, until we jump into trivia. Um, somebody else, Logan's asked another question here. What are the primary sources for data, um, for example, machine data, and which teams benefit from it mainly? And then that would be for Abra, I guess. Oh, that's my little question. Uh, the primary sources for data, the main one that people really like to use is our fleet management system, I think because it's simple. Uh, but for the rest of it, there's a lot of different sensor data, whether it's coming from the stuff that Andrew's doing in the plant, or if it's coming off of the trucks or the shovels in the pit, there's a lot of sensor data coming by the second from there. Uh, there is data in all forms it's that's coming in historians we've got data on sql servers we've got data in excel spreadsheets uh, a little bit of everything and the teams benefit from all of it so each and every one of those has a race 21 initiative attached to it that has proven value as well as teams at site that have their excel dashboards that they're still using and generating value off of as well there's the whole host. And if you want uh, more in depth, we can definitely connect with me. I can give you a whole tour if you want. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for that. All right, Natalia, if you get the slide up uh, with the, the, the testimonials and, and Stacey, yeah, if it, you can take it away. Sure, yeah. So so hopefully we'll just sort of wrap it up, but uh, hopefully we've piqued your interest in mining and in particular what tech has to offer. Um, and like we mentioned earlier, we hire for opportunities all across our operations across Canada. And uh, this, this slide here is just going to talk a little bit about some quotes from some students. So we do an evaluation with all our students that are outgoing from our co-op terms to sort of ask them how their term went, if they enjoyed it, and uh, what did they enjoy about it. And this is just some quotes from some students in the um, digital space that have talked about how they've enjoy their time with us and so yeah we can talk about it till we're blue in the face like I mentioned but it really means a lot when it comes from the students and and their experience with us so I think that really speaks volumes um so yeah probably the most common comment I think yeah, I could probably bet money on most of them when I go through the evaluations the most common comment we hear is I can't believe how much responsibility I was given as a co-op with tech um and yeah it can be a little intimidating at first but the learning curve is just huge and that's mainly why we focus on those longer terms because as Ms. Saki had mentioned earlier it really takes a while to really get into the space and really understand what the job is um, and you are getting some in-depth knowledge and, and really getting a, a quite a bit of experience during your time here so it uh, it's it's reason why we sort of lean on those longer terms because we really get to get a lot of value out of the student and the student gets a lot of value out of the term with us. Um, 
in terms of the postings right now, so we currently have postings on the website, like I mentioned earlier. So you can go to tech.com slash careers and you'll see a whole host of co-op positions that we're currently recruiting for. And, and like I mentioned in Cole alone, we're looking to fill around 70, over 70 positions for September alone. Uh, we hired 60 for last term. So at any given time, there's at least, um, you know, 120 students kicking around the operations and uh, within the offices that are, are co-op students. So it's quite a significant program for us and certainly adds a lot of value to their teams. And our, our teams heavily rely on these students to, to really make sure our projects are running smoothly and support the, the team. So um, yeah, I can confidently say, and I know Abra, you were shaking your head there in agreement that we uh, we certainly utilize our co-ops to, to really get a lot of really important work done. So you get to make some huge impact to our operations. Great, and I just wanna add that, uh, you know, these, these campus coffee sessions are our, our, our last one for the summer term. We'll start them up again in September. Um, but what we like to do is to provide you with content that's relevant and of interest to, to you and your, your classmates. Um, and so we, we really would appreciate your feedback. And so uh, we've created a feedback form, which we'll be posting this link here, but we'll also spam you afterwards so that you've got it and, and you can fill it in later. Uh, but uh, what we do is we take that information that you provide us and, and we make Campus Coffee better. Uh, we design it to be, you know, based on what you want to hear and, and, um, and um, yeah, so anyway, so, for, for the fall, we can have other sessions uh, with different types of career paths for students who are programming. We've got so many, uh, and these are just you know two different areas, uh, and we can we can do a deeper dive in, in many many other areas that might be of interest to you. So, but only way we're going to do that is if you tell us. So yeah, <laughs> the link is in there now. So um, yeah, otherwise you know we've got a couple of minutes, and and you know we a few of us can stick around afterwards if, you, if we do have more questions. Um, so feel free to uh, fire away any additional questions in the chat. I don't know if we have any remaining ones. I don't think so. I was just taking a quick peek yeah, to see if there's point. anything that we've missed. Um, yeah, I think we've got them all. Amy, Amy has a question. Hey, Amy, you want to turn your mic on? <laughs> can you hear me? <laughs> we can. Okay. Um, I just started at Tech at the beginning of May, and um, this is this is really great. This is really cool to like have a chance to learn about other parts of Tech, you know, because it's really intimidating to be like, looking through the org list and be like, hmm, there's some vague description about somebody. Maybe I should like send them an email and be like, your job sounds interesting, who are you? <laughs> so this is really great. Um, on that note, um, I wanted to ask uh, Pearl if um, maybe we could talk later because like uh, cybersecurity sounds really interesting and yeah. <laughs> Of course, anytime. Yeah, hop on, uh, you know, to tech and for, of course, advanced welcome to tech. Uh, but, you know, uh, look me up at the directory and I will be there. Very much approachable via Teams and you can also set up a direct uh, a calendar invite on my calendar. Thank you. Yep, no problem. And thanks for joining Amy today. <laughs> my pleasure. <All> right. <laughs> Last call All for right. questions. All right, apparently you guys are really, really thorough. So yeah. uh, nice work. I uh, will take this chance just to say thank you to uh, Abra and Perul and, and everybody else who uh, helped support this. Thank you everybody joining. If you have to jump off, please jump off. It looks like a question's come in there and, and we'll answer that. But for Abra and Perul, if you can stick around, great. If not, no worries. Um, oh, that's not a question, whoops. Yeah, it's, just a, it's just a thank you, yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, okay, so thank you. Yeah, great. Um, all right. We call that uh, a session and, and wrap it up. Wrap it up. Yeah. Well, thanks again for everyone to join. I appreciate you listening in and asking your your great questions and being so engaged as a as a group and and obviously to the speakers. You guys were awesome. So thanks for all your insights. Yeah. Thanks, Andrew, for coming on in a pinch in the last minute too. That's great. Thank you for having us. Thanks everybody for a great questions and interest for cybersecurity. I'm really, really thrilled. And I, I am gonna go back and work on some creating co-op position right away. <laughs> yeah, and, and for Abra's position, you know, I highly encourage you to uh, to apply for any of you if you're interested. Uh, it's you know, posting's up now. Uh, you, you know, you, you know who you potentially be working with, and and uh, yeah, I think there's there's uh, it's a great opportunity. If you have any questions, I'm really easy to find on LinkedIn with my unique first name. So feel free to reach out. <laughs>
Actually, that's oh. a good point. Likewise, for me, do not hesitate to reach out to me on LinkedIn. And I'm also uh, like, you know, as a vocation, I also mentor people for, you know, jobs or resume reviews or preparations. So by all means, please reach out. Awesome. Thanks for making yourselves available, you guys. Yes, no problem. Great. Well, thanks, everybody. Let's, uh, yeah, we'll end this uh, here. And and uh, if you want to uh, learn more about tech in the future, go to our website and, and come visit us for future Campus Coffees in September. All right. Everybody have a great summer. Hey, take care.